Hello, I'm Graham Elwood, and welcome to the Church of Batman. Uh, today I want to talk about a man, uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, um, who was a German Lutheran pastor, uh, theologian, and an anti-Nazi dissident. Uh, he was the author of The Cost of Dictatorship, and he was arrested, um, he was very openly uh, anti-Nazi, um, against the Nazi Party's euthanasia program and what they were doing to the Jews. He was arrested in April 1943, and then uh, two years later, in April of 45, as the Nazi regime was falling apart, um, he was implicated in the plot to assassinate um, Hitler and was killed uh, by the Gestapo, executed in 1945. And he wrote these letters uh, and papers from prison. Here's one on stupidity. Stupidity is a more dangerous enemy of the good than malice. One may protest against evil. It can be exposed and, if need be, prevented by use of force. Evil always carries within itself the germ of its own subversion in that it leaves behind in human beings at least a sense of unease. Against st stupidity, we are defenseless. Neither protest nor the use of force accomplish anything here. Reasons fall on deaf ears. Facts that contradict one's prejudgment simply need not be believed. <laughs> in such moments the stupid person even becomes critical and when facts are irrefutable they just pushed they are just pushed aside as inconsequential and incidental jesus i mean this is like i'm bringing this up because this is trump and his supporters trump like i understand so many of the criticisms of hillary okay um, the email servers, as I've said before in these videos, I don't, that, that didn't bother me. Benghazi was a tragedy and it was awful and could it have been handled better? Yeah, I don't think it was a conspiracy or a cover-up. Every secretary of state has had ambassadors get killed. Condoleezza Rice, uh, John Kerry, it's an, it's just, a, it's a sad, awful reality of working in an embassy uh, in the United States Embassy in the, the state of the world right now. They get attacked. It's awful. But the other stuff with Hillary, um, rigging the Democratic primary, the money with Goldman Sachs, the, um, you know, she sold uranium to uh, Russian business people and they've given her money through her foundation. I mean, so I understand those things that then you say, well, I want to go to Trump. It's like the Trump people... It's when you're just like you can't even reason with them. Like you argue with them online or whatever, and they, they you can't even you can't reason. There's no reason. You say Trump said this. He said this. This isn't the liberal media. He said this. He said he wants to ban Muslims. People, oh, that's all right, you know, <laughs> whatever. He says these awful things. He says these sexist. He, there's video of him saying all this awful sexist stuff. There's all these court cases, you know. He says he wants to make America great again and his products are made in China and other countries. And no one wants to hear that. And then Trump just disregards anything that doesn't agree with him. Like the carrier deal, right? So he came in, he was this big championship. I'm saving 1,100 jobs. Okay. And then the, the, head, the union boss goes, wait a minute, it was only 700 and then the government has to get seven million dollars in tax benefits or tax breaks to carrier, which has a like a four, almost a four and a half billion dollar profit. With a four and a half billion dollar profit, you should be able to save eleven hundred jobs. And the guy calls him out and says it's not even eleven hundred; it was seven hundred, and it was crony capitalism, as Sarah Palin said. What does Trump do? Ah, this liberal, this this union boss is a liar. No wonder no one wants to work for him. He just he won't listen to anything. Why, you know, he's asked, why don't you pay attention to more intelligence briefings? The most, maybe the most important thing a president should be doing. And Trump says, I don't need to. I'm like, you know, smart. Here we go. Um, <laughs> so in such moments, the stupid person even becomes critical. And when facts are irrefutable, they just push, they are just pushed aside as inconsequential and incidental. He did this throughout his whole campaign. And now he's doing it on Twitter as the president-elect. And Trump supporters are like, yeah, but Hillary, the but Hillary days are over. She's not going to be president. Trump is. 
and he's tweet like he doesn't pay his taxes. That's if Hillary's called this corrupt big business, she gets money from Goldman Sachs, okay, and he doesn't pay his taxes, then it's called, oh, that's he's a good businessman. Like just hit that just contradict themselves at every turn. And and they think and he thinks he's smart. Like he's this, you know, they all all the Trumpers all talk about it's this sweeping mandate. No, it isn't. You know, Hillary got 2.9 million more votes than him. There was another 8 million people that voted third party. That's a lot of people that didn't vote for him. There is no sweeping mandate. Obama had a mandate. You know, it's just... And the other thing, before the election, Trump was like, it's rigged. It's a rigged system. And then when he wins, oh, it's fine. Everybody stop. And then everyone makes fun of the protest. Oh, there's liberal protesters. Wait a minute, this country was founded by protesters. More facts you don't even want to listen to. Um, in all this, the stupid person, in contrast to the malicious one, is utterly self-satisfied. And being easily irritated, well, that sounds like familiar, That's becomes dangerous by going on the attack. This guy from a prison cell in Germany in 1943-44 is describing Donald Trump. For that reason, greater caution is called for when dealing with a stupid person rather than a malicious one. Never again will we try to persuade the stupid person with reasons, for it is senseless and dangerous. This is why Trump is so dangerous. And this is why, because had he won the popular vote but lost the electoral vote, he and his supporters would have gone nuts. Those anti-Trump protests in all those cities would have, those by comparison would be love-ins compared to what his people, who he was already saying, some of my Second Amendment friends might have something to say if Hillary wins. There was interviews with people at his rallies going, I might do something about it. They were threatening violence and if he loses and then he wins and they're like, oh, shut up, just accept the vote. You liberal crybabies, you're all butt hurt. What? That's like, oh, the Boston Tea Party was a bunch of liberal crybabies who can't handle a one cent tax. Why don't you just get a job <laughs> instead of polluting the Boston Harbor? It's ridiculous. And this guy was imprisoned by the Nazis, this is the thing that I have said. Again, I'm not a big Hillary supporter, but why Trump is so dangerous. This looks like Germany in the early 30s. Uh, Steve Bannon ran Breitbart. It's an alt-right. Alt-right, they are neo-Nazis. This is a threat. And a bunch of Germans who were smart and intelligent, Germany was an industrialized, educated country. It like. To me, Afghanistan, the rise of the Taliban makes more sense and is easily more easily understandable than what happened in Germany. Because what happened, so uh, the, the Soviet Union invaded uh, in the 80s. In the, in the 60s and 70s, um, Kabul was called the Paris of the Middle East. People were, were, it was a very progressive Muslim country and people listened to Western music and it was educated and they went to uh, college. They didn't have the beards. So you have three decades of war. You, so you have a crumbling um, education system. And then uh, as if you watch the movie Charlie Wilson's War, at the end of the movie, Tom Hanks' character, he's playing Charlie Wilson, he goes, look, this is, you know, they finally get the Soviet Union out of there. He goes, but look, this whole country, the Mujahideen, there's a high level of, of illiteracy, and now they're heavily armed. This is dangerous, and that's what happened. That became the Taliban, and it's dangerous. What happened in Germany was... was it, it's even harder to, to comprehend that this in, industrialized, educated country then ended up putting human beings in ovens. And if you don't think this is for real, I mean, Trump is tweeting like an angry 15-year-old anytime he doesn't get his way. Say what you want to say about Obama. He was very presidential. He didn't fly off the handle. Joe Biden did sometimes. But this is scary. And this is why we need to pay close attention and read more about Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Read his book, The Cost of Dictatorship. After I read it, we'll talk about it on this show. Thank you so much for watching. This is Graham Elwood with the Church of Batman.